Good evening, folks, and a hearty welcome to our drive-in theater. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. Did you fail to dress up for tonight's show? No tie, an old shirt and slacks, a house dress? Well, don't give it a thought. We're glad you came as you are. We just want you to enjoy yourselves. Don't forget to visit our refreshment center during the intermission or any time. You love the tasty array of snacks we have to offer. So will the youngsters. Everything is quality and mm, so good. We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. There are always wonderful new pictures to see, delightful snacks to nibble, a gay, pleasant evening for all. Oh, a word of caution. Don't drive over 10 miles an hour in the theater area for your safety's sake. And mom or pop, go with the kids when they leave the car. We hope you have a wonderful time. Come back soon. Count Sinistro. Born 1588. Condemned for his barbaric crimes to be buried alive. Because thine eye be evil, thy whole body be full of darkness. Well, look, Inspector, I've told you everything I know. Magic and the supernatural? Treasury of witchcraft. Oh, master, we are your slaves. We obey without question. It is too late. Sinistro. The devil of darkness. of supernatural horror. Cauldron of Blood. to wonder would ride through the air on a very fine gander. Oh, Mother Goose and her nursery rhymes. What does she know about modern times? <sighs> this is more like it. To get at this boodle, I had to use the noodle. I'm a shoppy. That's why my name's Pinhead. This is why I'm white brain. This is gonna be sensational. The face crooks at Fort Knox. Caught in the act, crime doesn't pay. You ain't got nothing on us. We're a couple of coin collectors. Ain't talking, see? Audrey, recite the next line. I ain't talking. I ain't no stool pigeon, see? <laughs> Audrey, go sit in the corner and memorize Mother Goose. Or <laughs> this sticky stuff. <laughs> oh, Mother Goose, all that so. Oh, puts me to sleep. Oh, this is out of the 
this world. Are you the real Mother Goose? Yes, and there's Mother Goose Land. You're in for a surprise. We sing, we jive, we're quite alive. What you see will open your eyes. Little boy blue, come blow your horn. The sheep's in the meadow, the cow's in the corn. Where's the little boy that tends the sheep? Well, Digney Jackson is fast asleep. When he lets off steam, then he blows his top. When he blows that horn, he can sure be buff. What a deep boing boing trip trop. When he lets off steam, then he blows his top. When he blows that horn, he can sure be buff. Boy, that's a dilly. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb, his hair was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, Mary went, Mary went. Everywhere that Mary went, she fleeced him for his dough. <laughs> Look, there's little Tommy Tucker who sing for his supper. Let's get lost, lost in each other's arms. Let's get lost, let them send out alarms. Folks, it's for Emerus. Yeah, it's slick. The goose what lays the golden eggs. What a cheat. My brain. It's a golden opportunity. Yeah. Let's. Up with the dukes. This is a stick-up. It's those phony, funny crooks. <gasps> oh, dear. They don't belong in here. Let me have your horn, boy, Blue. <laughs> oh, stop, thief. Oh, oh. oh, wait for me. Oh, wait, wait. can make me crack up. Stop, thief! the show.
condemned for his infamous and barbaric crimes to be buried alive. Because thine eye be evil, thy whole body be full of darkness.
Awaken. Rise from your sleep. Feel its power drawing you to me. No force on earth or in heaven can destroy the symbol that is sinistre. This talisman that sets me above everyone. Come. You are my chosen bride. You will follow me to the end of time. have given him a room, Bouvier. This terrible storm last night. The road was impossible. I could not refuse to give them shelter. I shall feel happier when he is gone. What about Mademoiselle Brown? Oh, she is leaving this evening. Now, please, will you excuse me? I have work to do. Well, get the car fixed, OK? Yeah, it goes like a bomb. You missed a good lunch. Yeah, what's all this? We're going to excavate some caves, back of the village. Well, they're quite something, according to Madeline. Postbox, will you? Every place we stop. Postcards. Those happen to be the ones you didn't post in my thing. Touché. Oh. Excuse me. Dave! Well, car sounded a little healthier. Yes, but it took them long enough. About time. Day's half over. Where have you been? Ate too much. And Keith, be careful. Come on now. Stop playing, little mother. See what happens when you bring big sister away with you? Duh. Now stop worrying. Bye now. See you. Bye. Monsieur Bexler. Yes, pardon. But uh, what time will you be leaving? Why, you want to get rid of me? Oh, no, 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 Monsieur Cosnard. Haven't had time to look around yet. Probably tomorrow. Merci, Monsieur. Hi there. Hi, Madeleine. Finished the packing? Almost. Just had to come up for air. What a bore. I'm exhausted. Do I need reviving? Can I get you a drink? Oh, it's the best offer I've had today. I'll send for the waiter, Monsieur. I'll be on the terrace. I collect. It just mounts up. Well, travel light. That's my motto. I agree. The climbing tackle the boys carry around weighs a ton. <laughs> it's how about these caves here, Madeline? You seen them? Oh, darling, can you see me crawling around on all fours underground? Ugh. <laughs> Give me peace and quiet. Well, you certainly get it here. The place could do with a bit of livening up from what I've seen of it. And spoil my favorite hideaway. That's right. We don't want hordes of trippers tearing the place apart. It's a ghastly thought. Good. I'd like a vodka. Double. Neat. Cognac for me, please. And a scotch and soda. Hmm? Does that character ever talk? <laughs> Doesn't like strangers, darling. They were a bit offhand in the village, too. Oh, it takes time to know them. Tomorrow, London. Oh, it's a pity I have to go. Tonight of all nights. Still, business calls. Why? What's so special about tonight? It's All Souls Eve. It's a big religious ceremony. Oh, you must see it. What happens? You'll see, but I promise you it's really something. 
Well, I hope the boys will be back in time. They hate to miss out on anything. What did I tell you? And what a marvelous setting for a story. Eh? Especially what comes later. Oh, what happened? They go down to the graveyard, the ritual. Oh, you must see it for yourself, Paul. The atmosphere alone, it'd make a marvelous horror. You know, ghouls and witches. <laughs> Don't let your imagination run away with you. It's really rather touching. They place candles on the graves of their dear departed. And they also keep one burning in the windows of homes. It's to light the way for returning lost souls who uh, supposedly rise up on all souls' eve. Oh, you must see it. Hey, you want to go? I'd love to. All right, I'll get my coat. Well, bring mine too, will you? That'll be my taxi. Well, I guess this is it. Oh, sorry, it's hello and goodbye, and we're all getting to know each other too. Still, do give me a ring when you get back, won't I you? will. Paul, you've got my number. Now, don't forget to call me. Right. And say goodbye to the boys for me. Right. Cold. Cool. <laughs> it's nothing. Someone walking over your grave. That's what they say, isn't it? <laughs> Bye now. <laughs> Mustache. Bye. Bye. Are you ready? All set. Let's go.
Paul. Don't let's go any further. Why? What's wrong? Oh, come on. Let's go back. No, no, no. no just a second. I want to see what's going on down there. I don't. Paul! Paul! Hey, what is this? Go back. Go no further. Let their souls rest in peace. It is too late. The black death is upon you. The evil eye. Hey, what is this nonsense? Nothing can protect you from the evil one and those that follow him. Take me away, Paul. Don't let us scare you. Oh, please, let's go. <laughs> it is too late. Sinistra, the devil of darkness. Someone close to you, a loved one. The black death has struck. Paul, Keith. Stay here. These are the risks they take if they had asked my permission to go there. You would have refused? Most well, certainly. Such careless young people. It is very dangerous. Then why isn't it cordoned off? Or some warning there? Would that have stopped them? The people in the village do not go there. They know better. What about the other boy, Dave? He's still down there. Monsieur, the gentleman explained there has been a fall of rock. It is impossible that he could be alive. So you're going to do nothing? But we have done what we could. We cannot do more. Now, the boy's sister, will you see that she comes to my office tomorrow? There are some um, papers to sign, some formalities, you understand. Inspector, the doctor... The doctor has made his report. I'll give it to the lady tomorrow. I suggest you return to the inn, monsieur. There will be no trouble, I think. Come on, my dear, you must not be alone. If only I could do something to lessen your grief. It's just that it happened just like she said. A warning. A warning? A gypsy. <laughs> that is nonsense. You cannot she believe that... She saw it. The mark of the Black Death. She talked to the... the evil one and his followers. Oh, I know it sounds My dear, you must forget such tales. Gypsies exist on such legends, make believe. But what she said happened. You cannot connect such talk to the tragedy. It was a coincidence. Tragic, but my only regret is that we were unable to do more. We heard him cry out, but by the time yes, we I got know. there and... I know. Please, let me help you erase this unhappy memory. Uh, how's Miss Forrest? Is she all right? I don't know. She's not here. What do you mean? Well, I left her for just a minute, but when I returned, she'd gone. Well, perhaps she's gone up to her room. Of course. I told her she must try and rest. I'll just check, see if she's all right. Perhaps a night air will make you sleep. It's so quiet. Not so peaceful. There's something strange about this place. I feel it. There's a... There's a fragrance, sir. Sickly fragrance that reminds me of death. My father, when he died, the room where he lay, 
It's like that. You must try and forget such unhappy memories. Oh, I suddenly turned cold. My hands are like ice. Oh. oh. Maybe we should go back. Any moment. Fine day. Yes, a very fine day indeed. I believe Monsieur Baxter expects me. I will tell him. Would you like some café, perhaps? Café noir ou café crème? Ah, ah, ah. An excellent idea, Bouvier. Café noir, oh. s'il vous plaît. Oui. Ah, bonjour, monsieur. I understand you wish to see me. Good morning. Look, Inspector. Shall we... Uh... I'd like to go over once more what happened. Oh, all in good time, please. I prefer you to sit. First, we shall have some coffee. Please, Inspector, let's not waste time. <laughs> It is so strange. You Anglo-Saxons, you have the reputation of being so unemotional, so calm. And we Frenchmen, whoa, we are supposed to be all uh, poof, poof, poof. But it is not so. A girl has disappeared. How do you expect me to behave? Come now, we must discuss this calmly and with reason. I am trying to be calm, but she's disappeared. I am aware of that. We have not been idle. My men are still looking. All night they have been searching. Monsieur? Thank you, Bouvier. You would like to join me? No, thank you. Look, is there something I can do? Ah, excellent, the croissant. Fresh and hot. Are you quite sure? Thank you, Bouvier. Please, monsieur. So you say you heard a scream? Yes. Are you certain? Well, it sounded like a scream. <laughs> It sounded like a scream. <laughs> so you could have been mistaken. It's possible. I understand you are a writer, monsieur. Yes. What do you write, fact or fiction? So what are you suggesting, that I imagined all this? There was a gentleman and his wife. Perhaps she left with them. Inspector, her clothes are still in her room. Yes. I see. Now, Miss Forrest, she was very upset over her brother's death. Well, naturally. It was a terrible shock. Mm. What are you getting at? Hello? It is for you, Monsieur Inspector. Thank you. If you will excuse me. Hello? This is Inspector Malin speaking. Ah. I see. Miss Forrest, I see. Please, attend to it. I shall come over immediately. Monsieur, her body was discovered in the lake. It seems she took her own life. I don't believe it. Please, I must go. Well, I'll go with you. No, you will not. But she was an old friend. I insist. I insist that you stay here, monsieur. This is a police matter. Look, Inspector. You will hear from me later when I have concluded my report. Bonjour, monsieur. So sorry, monsieur. Thank you. 
apologies, monsieur. I did not wish to wake you, but uh, there is someone to see you. I know it is late, but... Uh, I'll come right down. You bet, uh, monsieur. I will attend to it. for calling on you at this late hour. But I had to come and offer my condolences. My wife, too. Oh, she's so upset. If only she had not left her. Oh, please, she's nowhere to blame. If there is anything I can do, you have only to ask. Well, these people, this village. Village? What do you mean? I don't understand, monsieur. Well, there's something they're afraid of. Oh, monsieur, it's your imagination. You saw them at the cave. They all ran away. Monsieur, you are intelligent men. These are simple peasants. The superstition? The celebration last night? One mustn't take it seriously, monsieur. Yeah, but the gypsy. Would you listen to such foolishness in your own country? Oh, I can understand how you must feel, but... Come now. I tell you, there is something wrong, and I'm going to prove it. Prove? What can you do, monsieur? Get a second medical opinion for one thing. I'm having the bodies flown back to England. I shall insist on a post-mortem. But that is nonsense, monsieur. Maybe. But I just have this feeling and I've got to be sure. And there's also something else. Something else? You were about to say... This is a very beautiful piece of work. Please be careful. Well, I'm sorry. Just a foolish toy, monsieur. A toy? I might have killed you. I doubt it. But you were about to tell me something. That crest. Oh, it is of no significance. Just an antique. You have seen this before? No, no, no. I was just interested, that's all. Look, if you'll excuse me, I have to be up early. I'm leaving the first thing in the morning for England, so goodbye, monsieur. Oh, not goodbye. I have the feeling we shall meet again. Yes, perhaps. I'm sure of it. But next time, under happier circumstances. Monsieur. the living dead. Summon you and others who follow, both near and afar, to pledge allegiance to the devil of darkness. We, we follow, O oh master. We, we are your slaves. We, we obey, obey without, without question. Then, who were chosen to submit to servitude, must be cast out. A stranger who threatens to expose us must be struck down. We will go in their place. The talisman, the all-powerful symbol that protects us, must be restored. My lords in East, master, take mine, I beg you. You who defy the sacred symbol, must perish.
Madeline. I'm just not satisfied. Paul, I know how you feel, but what good will it do? It'll prove I'm right for one thing. But the doctor's report. Surely that's enough. It isn't enough for me. But if the autopsy proves you're wrong... Okay, then I made a lot of fuss over nothing. And what about Anne's family? Haven't you considered their feelings? Oh, family. An uncle in Canada she hasn't seen for years. Well, if you insist on going through with it... Well, I have to, for my own peace of mind. Well, you know best. Believe me, Madeline, I hope I am wrong. And I'm sorry I blew up like that. Oh, that's all right. I understand. Oh, and call me as soon as you have any news. Bye, Sorry I had to drag you down here all this way. You sounded pretty worried on the phone. Uh, confused is more like it. What's it all about? You don't mind, do you? I'm up to my eyes. And... Uh, you carry on. Sorry to disturb you, but I had to talk to someone. Okay, talk. Bob, you must have come up against some weird superstitions in your travels. Many times. Now, I don't mean amongst primitive jungle tribes. Oh, look now, you don't have to wear a loincloth or beat a tom-tom to be primitive. Or for that matter, superstitious. You walk under ladders? No. Superstition? Maybe superstition's the wrong word. What about supernatural? Well, like they say, there are more things in heaven and earth, etc., etc. Scientists have only scratched the surface of the extraterrestrial. We have to rely on psychology rather than on the so-called material proof. Now, take witchcraft. Everyone knows that went out with the Middle Ages. Oh, you think so? Do you know when the last witchcraft trial took place? 1926, France. There was another case in New York a few years ago. A man hired a character who supposedly had the evil eye. His job was to frighten the man working under him. <laughs> oh, I know, it sounds crazy, but it's absolutely true. Take my work here. Snake venom and its effect on animals. Poison to cure human beings. If I was in the jungle, I'd be a witch doctor, right? Well, how about those coffins? They couldn't just vanish. So, somebody took them. And at a rough guess, I'd say that somebody didn't want you to have those bodies examined. Yeah, that's what I think. If there's another reason, I'd be very glad to hear it. What made you suspicious in the first place? A gypsy. She predicted it. <laughs> Crystal gazing, I know nothing about you. You haven't much to go on, have you? No. <laughs> You see the police being interested in black death and evil eye talk? They'd have me certified. Hey, what about that medallion you mentioned? Have you got it? Yeah. Of course, there may be no connection. You should have handed it over, you know. I just thought it might be tied up somehow. Well, you could be right. There's your evil eye. Yeah? Snake or serpent, whatever it is. Come over here. That's how he catches his victim. He hypnotizes it. Freezes it with a look so that it can't move, then he makes a strike. Here we have the bat effigy. In many countries, they are said to have occult power. What, those things? Uh -huh. They look harmless enough. They do carry rabies, you know. <laughs> oh, not that lot, don't worry. What do you think, Bob? You think there may be something in all this? Well, you want something more concrete before you go to the police. Is there, uh, is there nobody else that can help? Somebody that knows the village, perhaps? Well, there's Madeline Braun. She's been there a couple of times on holiday. Well, what are you waiting for, man? Get on to her. Madeline, do you mean to tell me that people are actually going to buy these? I mean, look at this one. You'd be surprised, darling. I know my American tourists. They must be out of their tiny minds. Put it there, darling. <laughs> Hello, the odd spot. Hello. Paul! Hey, Madeline, where do you want these? Oh, hold on a minute, will you? 
Oh, darling, Karen, be an angel and give Derek a hand. I'm sorry, of course. Put it in the back there, darling. Sorry, Paul. Yes, I read about it. I called you last night. Oh, darling, I hate to be a bore, but, well, I'm madly busy at the moment. Could it wait? Well, I want to talk to you about that village we stayed at in Brittany. Yes, but you know the place. I thought you might be able to tell me something. Well, anything. No, 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 no. It's nothing to do with the police. I talked it over with a friend of mine who does research at Rayburn's lab. He thinks I may be onto something. Oh, darling. I do think you're becoming a little, well, obsessed with all this. But if you think I could help... Look, why don't you come over this evening? About, uh, 9.30? Right. Fine. Thanks, Madeline. Hello, Mr. Baxter. Yes? Good morning. I'm uh, Inspector Hardwick, Scotland Yard. I wonder if I could have a word with you. Yes, well, you better come in then. Thank you. Scotland Yard, eh? And you never mentioned the autopsy? Oh, what's the point? I've nothing to go on except a hunch. They said it was just a routine call. They have no idea how or why the coffins vanished. I've had quite a day. I've been doing a little research. I spent the afternoon at the British Museum. If you ever get bored, I can recommend the North Library. What'd you find out? There we are. A talisman. Your medallion. A talisman, an object which is said to possess a supernatural power. See ceremonial magic, otherwise the art of dealing with spirits. In a word, necromancy or sorcery. The raising of the souls from another world. All souls eve. By the way, do you know why a bridegroom carries his bride across the threshold? No. <laughs> the door was where the devil or those of the evil eye were set to congregate. Just a little something I thought you might like to know. Now then, where was I? Yes. Witchcraft. Black magic? Well, now, that's not a criminal offense since uh, 1736. But last year, there was a lot of publicity in England about uh, some mysterious rituals, grave openings, bodies being removed. However, it's all there. I hope you can sort it out with the help of Madeline. Yeah, I almost forgot. Better be getting over there. Well, thanks again for doing the spade work. Quite an eye-opener in an evil sort of way. Back to the Bunsen burner. I'm up. So long, Paul. were put out to pass, hmm? Well, a model, eh? How old is she? Difficult to tell in those glasses. Oh, just turned 20. 
Must have been a U-turn. Now, now, darling, no need to be bitchy. Oh, sweet. I Darling, they just descended. Oh, you know how it is. Now, I did phone you, but there was no answer. Oh, come on now, relax. It'll do you good. We'll have a little talk another time tomorrow. I don't think I should. I won't hear of you rushing off like that. Karen! Karen! I want you to meet Paul. Theodore, oh, darling, look after him. He needs cheering up. Hello. Go on, you two. Have fun. Colonel, come along. Well, you heard the lady. Yes, I heard it. I think a drink to start off with. You look as though you could do with one. Yeah, I could do with more than one. So who's counting? second Canadian club. Anyway, you're feeling better. I can see that. I'm surprised you can see anything in those. Why all this mystery bit? Oh, just part of the image. Yeah, well, I can't bear talking to anyone wearing dark glasses. Mind if I destroy the image a little? Don't be too destructive. Yes, that's better. Same goes for you. Now you're in focus. Yeah. I bet you live alone, like it, and in show business, right? I live alone, loathe it, and I'm a model. Off and on. And when you're off? Oh, you name it and I've done it. Right now I'm working for Madeline. You and antiques? Oh, well, makes for contacts. An artist came in the other day looking for a model, so. So you're on again, huh? Looks like it. He's supposed to be here this evening, coming to talk business. Best of luck. Thank you. I might need it. I can't figure him out. Or myself either, for that matter. Still, it's a job. But um, what are you doing after it's fixed? Go oh, back to my one-roomed fire trap, I suppose. Does it have a phone? Cromwell 2400. You get a better idea. You get hungry, I know a place with the scrambled eggs are great. I never eat breakfast. Still, if it's as good as you say, it may be. I cook in a non-stick frying pan. Well, eggs make a change from etchings. Now, now, Paul. Must monopolize. Come on, Karen, darling. Circulate. Well, you heard the lady. I heard. I think this is where I came in. Well, i see you later, then. I can't wait to see your kitchen. Thank you. Say goodbye to all my friends. Okay. Ah, oh, Karen, my sweetheart. Oh, be a doll and get me a drink, will you? I have to see a man about an address.
Good morning, Inspector. Sergeant. Morning. Well, you're having quite a time of it, one way or another, eh? All this for nothing. Well, as I told the constable last night, nothing was missing. Yeah. What's over there? The bedroom. Well, have a look at it, will you, Sergeant? What about windows? All locked. Front door? That was open when I came home. What time was that? Oh, about 2.30. I'd been to a party. What time did you go there? About 10. Did you notice anybody hanging around outside when you left the flat? No, 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 but I was in a hurry. I just came home for a minute and then popped out again. You were in a hurry, eh? <laughs> You're not suggesting that I... Did you, did you close it? Oh, it has happened. I've done it myself before now. But that doesn't explain why they went to so much trouble for nothing. You haven't been plagued by anonymous phone calls or such like. Regarding what? Well, practical jokers. We've had a spate of them just lately, getting us out on wild goose chases. False fire alarms, phony robberies, coffins disappearing. Uh, that was no practical joke, Inspector. Yeah, pretty bad taste, if it was. Anything been reported? No, nothing so far. Nothing back there, sir. Windows and door OK. Look, Mr. Baxter, if, as you say, nothing was stolen, is there anything they may have been after? No, nothing. Are you quite sure? Oh, why should I keep anything back? Oh, you'd be surprised how reluctant some people are to give us the full facts. I think they like to make us earn our pay. We get the complete runaround sometimes. And who knows? Some of them probably do have something to hide. Well, look, Inspector, I've told you everything I know. Yes, yes, I'm quite sure you have. Still, uh, if you do happen to remember any little thing that might give us a lead. Oh, yes, and uh, there is one other thing, Mr. Baxter. I understand you know uh, Dr. Kelsey. Dr. Kelsey? Yes, I was with him last night. That's right. Your name was in his diary. You saw him before you went to the party? What's all this about, Inspector? Mr. Baxter. What time did you leave, Dr. Kelsey? About 9.30. I see. That's about the time of his death. He's dead? Oh, didn't you know? They found him this morning. It was on the radio. What happened? Oh, uh, an accident. A poisonous snake had escaped. The doctor was bitten. He was also rather badly crushed. A heavy cage fell on him. I'm sorry to... Uh, Break this to you so suddenly, Mr. Baxter. Bad luck seems to be following you around, doesn't it? Well, you'll be hearing from us. Oh, and I'd, uh, I'd like to hear from you if you do happen to remember anything that might help us. Any little thing. Yes. Yes. Oh, Inspector. Yes? Well, thank you again. Magic and the supernatural. Treasury of witchcraft. Schizophrenia. And the Encyclopedia of Witchcraft and Demonology. That's four to go on with our check on the others. Well, this will keep you busy for a while, thanks.
Oh, I'm dying for a drink. How about you? Thank you, my dear, but no. I would much prefer if we could continue. Okay, do you mind if I slip across the pub for a moment or two? Mm -hmm. I shall be here. You sure there's nothing I can get you? Nothing, thank you. How's it going? Pleased? You're a perfect subject, my dear. I only hope I can do you justice. Oh, have I interrupted? Oh, Karin, I would like you to meet my wife. Hello. You are leaving? Oh, I'm coming back. Oh? Unless you'd rather make it tomorrow. I would prefer that we continue tonight. All right, I'll see you later then. Goodbye. It is obvious she knew you were displeased. You did not tell her that you had a wife. Is it important? To me, yes. Tanya. You know the reason why this girl was chosen. She will be the hostage. The talisman must be given back to us. And then? She's of no further use. Oh, Armand, is this true? Tell me she means nothing to you. How can you doubt me? Did I not choose you? Go now. The talisman must be returned. What if the Englishman refuses? He will not refuse. But he is suspicious. He asks questions about it. Then we must ensure that his questions are not answered. You must watch. Go now, before she returns. Excuse me, sir. The book Talisman's The Power of Magic. It's not available. What do you mean, it's not available? Well, it's in our restricted section, sir. Well, is it possible to have a look at it? Not today, sir, no. I'm afraid it's almost closing time. Oh, well. Well, thank you. Uh, sir, no smoking permitted. Miss Karen Steele, please. Yes. Hold on, will you? Karen! Miss Steele, telephone. Miss Steele? Telephone. Miss Steele? Telephone. Steele, what? you're wanted on the telephone. Oh, it's much too early. Hello? I'm afraid Miss Steele isn't in. Oh, well, it's hard to say she comes and goes. Yes? Would you tell her Mr. Baxter called? My number's Chelsea 3131. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. Excuse me. Oh, sir, I'm terribly sorry, but the book Talisman's The Power of Magic. Yes? We don't have it, sir. Yesterday you said you had it. It's missing. We've looked everywhere. Missing? I've got a terrible suspicion that it's been stolen. As far as I know, it's the only copy in England. Well, if it does show up, will you put it aside for me? Yes, of course, sir. It's, it's extraordinary the interest in the archive these days. Yes. Well, if you do find it, call me, will you? Thanks. Thank you, sir.
yes. You called this morning. Yes, I gave her your message, Mr. Baxter. No, no, I'm afraid she isn't. It looks as if she's gone. Her clothes are all gone. No. Hello? if you have. No, I'll be all right in a minute, really. You must take care, my dear. Your hand. It's so cold. Karen. No. Karen. No, please. No. Darling, you know what these girls are like. Completely irresponsible. No, not Karen. Hey, what is this? Don't tell me you and Karen. Well, what do you know? Now, be serious, Madeline. You're serious, and no mistake. And to think I brought you two together. The party was a success. This artist that was coming, did he show up? What? Oh, darling, to be perfectly honest, it got so mad, I don't know who was there and who wasn't. You don't know who he is or anything? Oh, sweetie, you know Chelsea. People come and people go. Oh, now, you mustn't get in a tiz. She'll turn up, I'm sure of it. Now, look, if you want that little talk, you know the villagers, Paul? I think it may be a bit late for talking, Madeline. Paul! Well, I'm... Uh... Glad you've decided to take us into your confidence at long last, Mr. Baxter. Well, I'm sorry, Inspector, but I had nothing to go on. Nothing tangible. And it took a girl's disappearance to stop you playing detective, eh? Well, this also may be just a hunch. I've no proof she's mixed up in all this. Well, you know, for a time, I thought that you were mixed up in it, whatever it is. Me? Dr. Kelsey. His death was no accident. He was murdered. Those two marks on his neck might have been a snake bite, but he didn't die of poisoning. That snake's venom had already been extracted. Well, that's funny. Miss Forrest, the girl who was drowned, and her brother Keith, they also had two marks on their necks. Did they, indeed? Now, look, Mr. Baxter, don't you think it's about time you told me everything, tangible and otherwise? <laughs>
Karin? Karin? What are you doing here? Your girl, Karen. Yes? I know the reason why you have brought her here. Oh, you know. And what she means to you. You tell me that she is a hostage, but she's here to take my place. Oh! I beg of you, send her away. Haven't I served you, carried out your every wish? And you will continue to do so. Please, send her away, get rid of her. Only when the talisman has been returned. That is not true, she is here to take my place. That is what you want, I know it. Silence! I must have the talisman by sunset tomorrow. I beg of you, do not send me away. Go, I tell you. I am dismissed. Until I summon you again. As a youngster, I used to conjure up all sorts of faces, phantoms, demons and the like, just gazing into the fire. And as for making up ghost stories, <laughs> I could scare the living daylights out of myself sometimes. You should have been a writer. Mm -hmm. I know one thing. What you've just told me beats any story I ever dreamed up, or read about for that matter. It's the truth, Inspector. That man who found the boy's body, and his wife, could you describe them to me? Yes, he was quite distinguished looking. Around 35 to 40. Dark. His wife was very attractive, kind of gypsyish. What was his name again? Moulier. Armand de Moulier. Yes, he was very charming. But I got the feeling it was affected. He was much too smooth. You know, what beats me is why Dr. Kelsey was killed. You sure you didn't tell anybody he was helping you? No. Not even Carrot Steel? No. Now I'm very worried about her, Inspector. Yeah, so I've gathered. Crazy, isn't it? You meet someone only once? Oh. Hey, you know, it's 1.30. Oh, sorry. Didn't realize it was so late. Shall I ring for a cab? No, thanks. The ball could do me good. And I'll take this ugly little brute along with me. Well, I must say, it's a change from the usual routine. I don't bother, I'll see myself out. Good night. Good night, Inspector. Hello? Yes, Madeline. Karen. I'll be right over. When I came home, the door was open, and there it was. Well, who could have brought it, and why? You tell me. The artist, maybe? Just a minute. Look. His signature? The serpent and the bat. 
The talisman. Talisman? Yes, medallion I found the night Anne disappeared. I thought it might have something to do with her death, a clue. Paul, don't think me mad, but could this be some sort of a warning, a message, or... Karen's been kidnapped? The medallion is the ransom? Yes. Do you have it? No, no, I gave it to the police. The police? Are you mad? Madeline, what's the matter? Oh, you fool, don't you know what you've done? Well, what are you talking about? Karen, she's in danger if anything happens to her. Can't you see what you've done? You must get it back, somehow. I know how you feel, but I think I'll just take this along with me. But it may be too late. Get the medallion. Sorry, Madeline, but I've got to do this my way. Let me go. Devils of Darkness, eh? Count Sinister. Otherwise, Armand du Molière, born 1588. It's the same man, Inspector, but it's not possible. Well, I don't profess to know anything about reincarnation, and I certainly never believed in black magic until now. The raising of the dead, the ritual, it all fits. Yes, and his followers have started up over here now. Sarge, get out of Interpol. See if they've got anything on this Jim Moliere and on that village. Malin, the local police inspector. He must have known about this. Got that? Oh, and uh, post a couple of men outside, will you? Right. Inspector, if this picture was to scare me off, why this? Why this tip-off? I'd say somebody was stepping out of line by the look of things. Pity you disturbed them before they finished the message. The O. I wonder what that means. The only... The old something? Odd? The odd spot? Madeline shop? Yes. Yes, I think we better have a few words with Miss Madeline Braun. Madeline Braun, is she here? I'm sorry. We're closed. Inspector Harwick, Scotland Yard. Is she upstairs? She's not here, I tell you. She's gone away. Well, we'll take a look up there anyway. Excuse me. Well, what's it all about? What's upstairs? Well, just an attic. Here, I'm not supposed to go up there. Aren't you? I don't know what you expect to find there. Never mind that. Open it. See? I told you. You know where she's gone? I don't know. To the country somewhere. A truck arrived yesterday morning. The truck? 
What for? Like a couple of coffins. She gets all kinds of antiques, you know. Inspector. Got that dough from France. They're on the same thing over there. That Inspector Malin character got arrested yesterday morning. And a whole crowd of them from the village. It's black magic, all right. They're on their way over here, some place called Ferndale. Well, there must be dozens of places called Ferndale. Did they say which one? No. By the way, seen this? What happened? Look. Cover it. Sinistre. He mustn't know. We can't tell him. Madeleine, he mustn't find out. First the talisman. And now this fool. The girl is all he really wants. And Tanya? He wants Karen. He can have her. We'll offer her to him tonight. The sacrifice? The initiation will take place at midnight. Karen, a drink. Get out! Karen, why can't you be nice to me, Karen? Why can't you be kind to me, Karen? Oh. Leave her alone, you fool! What do you want to do that for? my dear. You are also very brave. 
as brave as I. Your followers, Master, they await you. Please, I would like to help. to get on to Malin, then. Remember the waiter? Plain clothes man. As soon as he nailed the inspector, the whole village opened up. Yeah, it took them long enough. Well, fear can be a terrible thing, Mr. Baxter. And when you're monkeying with black magic, who knows what you're up against. Arise. Prepare the circle. That binds you as one. Out. The odd spot, the old manor, and it's near the cemetery. That's the place, all right. Come on. You, who follow the devil of darkness, pledge allegiance. We follow, O oh Master. We are your saints. We, we obey, obey without question. In the name of our Lord Satan, do you acknowledge the powers of darkness? We do. We follow the orders of the Sinistra. The one who defiled the sacred talisman has been struck down. Get every available man. Sir. And hurry. Calling all cars in V Division. Calling all cars in V Division. Proceed to the old manor, Ferndale, immediately. Proceed to the old manor, Ferndale, immediately. Before you is the neophyte who shall be initiated into the order. Before you is the convert who will serve as high priestess 
and become my chosen bride. With her own blood, I will make the mark of the sacred talisman. You will awaken to find life everlasting. Inspector!
refresh yourself. It's intermission time. The concession stand is open and ready to serve you. Well, you see what I get from the refreshment counter. Oh boy, popcorn and candy bars and ice cream and oh boy, sparkling ice cold Coca-Cola. Oh boy, that tastes good. Have you been to the refreshment counter? Remember, your favorite snack will taste especially good with world famous ice cold Coca-Cola. It's time to stretch and fetch. See what's cooking at our refreshment counter. You'll find your favorite foods and beverages, plus many new goodies to tempt your appetite and add to your evening's pleasure. Everything's the finest quality. So treat yourself now. After the show, please replace the speaker on its stand. If you accidentally break the cord, please turn the speaker in at the refreshment stand or the manager's office. Thank you. And by the way, on your way home, drive... Where is everybody going? To the refreshment center. It's everybody's favorite spot for delicious, tasty food from a snack to a full meal. Drinks, coffee, hot chocolate, and ice cold drinks of all flavors, plus all the extras, including gum, ice cream, candy. Make your evening at this drive-in even more enjoyable. The refreshment stand has everything to make your visit here a pleasant one. Why not get something now? It's intermission time, folks. Time out for a delicious snack in our sparkling refreshment building. Every item a fresh, appetizing taste treat. Crispy, crunchy, hot buttered popcorn. Really good. Sizzling hot dogs, bursting with juicy goodness. Candy bars, a taste-tempting array. Tangy, tasty barbecues, served piping hot. Thirst-quenching, refreshing, ice-cold drinks. Refreshing, delicious, satisfying ice cream. Fresh-brewed hot coffee, as you like it. like your pizza? Gobbled? Nibbled? Two-fisted style. you like ours best anyway. A crisp, delicate crust topped with our own special nippy tomato sauce, seasoned just the way you like it, and lots of golden Italian cheese melted right in. Delicious, and on sale now at the refreshment center. Pizza, piping hot and tangy. How about some right now? 
Wouldn't some hot buttered popcorn hit the spot right now? Extra fluffy, extra big kernels of it pop to perfection. Then drenched with the golden goodness of pure sweet creamery butter. Can't you just taste it? We heat the container extra high, but <laughs> you better buy two more for the rest of the family. Piping hot, golden buttered popcorn at the refreshment center right now. How do you make a picture of a perfect hamburger? Start with the finest grade of government inspected beef. Take it sizzling hot from the griddle and serve it up on an oven fresh bun. For the finishing touches, add mustard, ketchup, relish, or the works. Makes your mouth water, doesn't it? Yes, that picture perfect hamburger is waiting for you right now at your refreshment center. There's time to pick up enough for everyone. As you leave the theater, folks, please be careful. Don't let this happen to your car. Be sure to remove the speaker before you leave. If you should accidentally pull a speaker loose, please turn it in at our snack bar or box office. Thank you. Hot popcorn just popped. Try a terrific hot barbecue sandwich. It's intermission time, folks, and that means it's time for a tasty snack. How about a stroll over to the refreshment counter for a delicious bite to eat? You don't have to worry about missing any part of the show because our announcer will let you know three minutes before the show starts again. See you over at the refreshment counter. And now, here's our own special hot chocolate. Extra creamy, rich, and delicious because we whip every drop frothy smooth. Gives it something special in the flavor department. Creamy hot chocolate at the refreshment center. Pop's old fashioned soda shop. Remember how good Pop's candy and soft drinks were? His popcorn was the best in town. Some of your fondest memories are of refreshing treats from Pop Soda Shop. Well, there's no reason why you can't enjoy flavorful treats today, just like way back then. Visit our refreshments. It's refreshment time, and our refreshment stand is loaded with good things to eat. There's crispy, crunchy popcorn and hot, delicious, buttered popcorn, lots of candy, and frosty, refreshing, cold drinks. Why not treat yourself at the refreshment center now? Nothing refreshes like frosty, delicious ice cream. At your refreshment stand, you'll find every kind and every flavor of frozen treats. Refreshing, good as they can be. Yes, tasty ice cream for everybody at the refreshment center. Pick some up now. Popcorn hungry, we have it. Kettle in the popper. There are other treats for you too, such as fresh candies and ice cream. Visit the refreshment center now. Enjoy a delicious snack and ice cold Coca-Cola. Music to the ears of the hungry. The sizzle of a mouth-watering hamburger. Fresh, lean beef, done to a golden brown, couched in a soft bun, and garnished to taste. Man, that's hunger heaven. And you'll feel like you're heaven sent when you get one at our refreshment stand. Now, it's showtime. <laughs>
are Mr. Claude Marchand of Aledi Magazine. Yes. Would you please check with Pan American? There is a message for you. Merci. Mademoiselle, my name is Claude Marchand. I believe there's a message for me. Oui, Monsieur Marchand. Here it is. It arrived this morning. Thank you. <laughs> my editor always finds me. Change of plans. Interview. Change of plans, interview, photo assignment, sculptor Badulescu, Pinderera. Let's see, that's in Spain, isn't it? Oui, monsieur, on the Costa del Sol, near Malaga. Good. I was looking forward to a rest after my last assignment. Je m'excuse, monsieur, but here are your tickets to the Costa del Sol and the time schedule. Your baggage has been taken care of and there will be an auto at your disposal when you arrive. Uh-huh. Now that's what I really call efficient service. <laughs>
Me llevó la sombrilla. Uh, it's late. Buenas. the action. What? People. Where does everybody go? Everybody seems to prefer Shanghai's. Shanghai's? Uh, yes, but between you and me, it's a filthy place. Uh. Here you'll find everything neat and clean. Well, I hope so. I'd hate to leave this place with any portable pets. I don't suppose we're staying long. Nobody ever does. Just long enough to put this place on the map. Cheers. <laughs> Not a bull. Hey, 
only man. How about a drink with me, Elder? Mm. No. Who does she think she is? Tomorrow, don't forget. Isn't he monstrous? It takes all kinds. How's my credit tonight? Well, even worse than mine. You know what a sucker I am for a starving artist. I know. Let's eat outside. Marvelous idea. Hey, you. Hey. You give me something for my poor old dog instead of nosing into other people's affairs. Wow! He's a good dog. The only one of his breed around here. Out of four. Out of three. I know that face. <laughs> I'll be a monkey's uncle if it isn't old Claude. Claude Marchand. <laughs> As I live and breathe. Don't breathe on me, Pablo. Oh, same old Claude. Always making fun. How are you, my friend? How's the boy? <laughs> Small world, huh? <laughs> Small but crowded. What are you doing here? On the lamb or something? You remember my old uncle? Yes. The rich? The rich one? Well, <laughs> he finally died. Ah. <laughs> he left me a few pesetas, and in this old town, I can live like a king on it. <laughs> so I see. Why, this is paradise. That's what it is. Paradise. Cheap, sunny, full of beautiful girls. Between you and me, you can't find anything you want here. And best of all, there's nobody who knows about it. <laughs> I'll fix that. Holiday sent me here. Holiday? The magazine? Mm -hmm. But you spoil everything. Right. Come here. Who is she? Ah, she's a cheap tramp. She poses for those artists with nothing on. That's the kind. <laughs> That's the kind I like. Hey, say, you play darts. Who is the owner? That one over there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, baby, you'll have no problem. Waiter, Lemmy. How is business? Mine's lousy, but yours seems to be pretty good. Yeah, I'm not surprised yours is lousy. A beer, please. I bet half of those bums haven't got enough to pay for their own dinner. You know, what this town needs is some fat, rich tourists. The kind that drives the prices up. That won't help much unless you own something worth selling. Well, wouldn't a couple of thousand be enough to option the good beach land around here? My thousand or yours? A thousand each. All right. What's the pitch? Leave it to me. I understand there's a celebrity living here, Franz Badulescu. I'd like to take some photos of him and his work. Badulescu sees no one, especially from the press. And then I'd like to find somebody who knows a little bit about the art racket, somebody who could organize a few things for me. Valerie could handle that. You know Badulescu's wife, don't you? I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm not for rent. A hundred bucks and all the Chinese food you can stand, fair enough. I'm sure Valerie would rather help us as a favor, wouldn't you? I always find it easier to pay cash. Be here tomorrow at 10.
Hola, Pilar. She's mute, poor darling. Can't say a word, but I understand her perfectly well. Di a la señora que estamos aquí, Pilar. Hello, Tanya. I'm... I'm terribly sorry. About what? We just Well, I'd, I'd better explain. You see, when my editor in Paris found out I was coming down here for a holiday, <laughs> you're not going to believe this, but then he... I don't. But since you are here, you might as well come in anyway. Oh, well, yes. Come on. Follow me. What an act. It worked, didn't it? Beautiful place. It's enchanting. I'm sorry, Vanley, but I'm afraid that France will only be able to see one of you. That's all right. Will you please wait here? I thought good artists were supposed to starve. But Ulesco isn't all that good. Huh? He's just fashionable. Or at least he used to be a few years ago. Yes, I've heard of him. Everyone's heard of him. Tania saw to that. Uh -huh. When he married her, she was his model. And little by little, she made friends with all the people that count in art circles. She created the great Badulescu. My boss should have hired her instead of me. What a promoter. <laughs> Who's that? Momo. And I say that you will see him. <laughs> Momo! He's very shy. He only goes to Tanya. Oh. No, he isn't shy. Come on, Momo, don't be bashful. Come on. Actually, he reminds me of a friend of mine. France is ready to receive you now. Two more teas, please, and um, Bandler will take hers in here. Put Momo back in the cage. Would you please follow me? Please don't stay too long. France is not too, too strong. France, dearest. Oh. This is Monsieur Marchand that I just spoke to you about. How do you do, sir? Forgive me for not rising, but as you see, I'm rather handicapped. I know. I remember reading you had a serious auto accident a couple of years ago, isn't it? Yes, he was, but he's getting much better. But it is all behind me, thanks to my dear Tanya, whose devoted care. I don't know what I would have done without her. Monsieur Marchand is here to discuss your work, dearest. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Please sit down, Monsieur Marchand. Thank you. I'd like to ask you a few questions, sir. You don't mind if I smoke, do you? No, no. There's a rumor, a rumor that was printed in the London Art Review. Oh, let me think. Way back in, in 1931, I believe it was, that in a series of animal sculptures of great realism, you experimented with the use of actual animal skeletons as armatures. Would you like some tea, Monsieur Marchand? No, thank you. You are well prepared for this interview. Well, I'm indeed flattered. Perhaps you remember from that same series a group of bronzes called Fruit Song. The work consisted of a group of small goats in repose. Ah, I've often felt it was the finest thing that I have ever done in form, texture, line, the organization. The totality of the work created an air of great tranquility. Monsieur Marchand just told you that he did read the article. Oh, yes. You are saying, sir, about the goat bronzes. Oh, yes, fruit song. Well, in that case, bones for that particular group were purchased from the local abattoir. As to the others, they were bought from medical laboratories. <laughs> Things that he remembers. <laughs> I once fathered a griffin. You know, the mythological beast, half lion, half eagle. I think that 
A couple of good photographs of your work would be better than any article I could write about you. Photographs? No, no, I, I think not, I think not. I don't really see any harm in it, Franz. I'm, I'm sure it won't take more than an hour or two. No, 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 no. Actually, I have my equipment right here in the car. I'm afraid we'll have to wait. We are quite prepared today. As you wish. Shall I call you tomorrow? Please do. Fine. It has been an honor, sir. I'll be with you in a moment. Take it. What a woman. She is marvelous. I don't know. I sense something weird between those two. Oh? I didn't know that sensitivity was one of your strong points. That's right, my sweet. Don't touch that. Sorry. It's extremely fragile. Aren't these hands copied from that drawing? Not copied. We call it transposing from one medium to another. France has added a third dimension to paintings of great masters. I see. Uh, for instance, this is an early Delacroix. Very early. Is this what he's working on now? France does not like to expose his work before it is completed. Will you be in touch, Monsieur Marchand? Tomorrow. If we are ready. We'll see you tonight? Yes. Good night, darling. Majo no ha desaparecido. Majo ha muerto. Majo muerto. Y yo, la reina de los gitanos, digo que Majo ha muerto. I question the wisdom of receiving this man, Tanya. You question my wisdom? Where would you be if it weren't for me? I who created and molded the image of Bodilesco and his devoted and adoring wife. Devoted? Huh. Till death do us part, I suppose. Hmm. I thought that kind of thing went out of style. What kind of thing? Painting people the way they actually look. I only do it for practice occasionally. Ah. Unless one has mastered the concrete, it's pointless to attempt the abstract. <laughs> you painters talk too much. For three hours I've been trying to find something interesting enough to attract people to that artist's colony. And all you characters do is chatter and get drunk. And work. Huh. Why don't you give a party? Everybody's very interesting at a party. That's the most intelligent thing you've said. It's the only thing I said. Sit still, Elga. Well, give a costume party, that's what. But why would anybody bother to make up a costume? Why do canaries sing? Because we feed them. 
I'll come for nothing. <laughs> He'll probably want you to come in that costume. How about this for a theme? Foreign artists pay tribute to their Spanish master, Goya, in their annual spring frolic. I think it sounds just terrible. Right. I have a better idea. We'll call it our weekend back and hell. Hmm? Make it seem like an orgy. That sounds even worse. Can you get everything ready for tomorrow? Tomorrow? Impossible. Tomorrow's too soon. All right, we'll make it the end of the week. Oh, wait a moment. Hey, I just remember. I know somebody who used to be an actor. That's it. He has trunks full of old costumes and things like that. Fine. You'll be in charge of the costumes, Elga. I'll fix everything up with Shanghai. In the meantime, we'll be working on our photo layout.
Get out, I said. Get out! 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 Get out of my room! Get out! Get out! Get out, I said! Get out! Get out! Bloody Mary, will you, darling? Hair of the hound, hmm? God, what a night I had. <laughs> I had a few too many. Where were you last night? I was expecting you. Claude and I drove up to Calvario to get some night shots, and... But kind of late. You know. Yes. Yes, I do know. So, how do you like working for Monsieur Marchand? I mean Claude, of course. Not too bad. Is Pilar around? In the kitchen, I suppose. Where else would she be? Come on, give me that drink, darling. <laughs> You'll be late for work, you know. Would you come down? Here. Yeah. Like this. This way. Will you please relax? Darling, tell her all I'm trying to do is to take a picture. Tell her yourself. Okay, let's try again. A little bit left. Closer to the cactus. Aren't you overdoing the local color bit? Not at all. Are you nobody, too? That makes a pair of us. Two gentlemen on the beach. Since most of them owe me money, they have to come in whatever costume I tell them. That's what I figured. Tell me, how is our land speculation coming along? By tomorrow, we'll control every square foot of property worth having. We'll be rich in no time. Passe, Domingo. I was wondering when you'd show up. Hoy es el funeral de Majo. Y todos los gitanos estamos de luto. Majo dead. What happened to her? When? 
El diablo vino y se lo llevó. Majo salió de su casa y nunca más regresó. Who is Majo? A little hunchback gypsy who rented umbrellas on the beach. But how did he die, Domingo? He looked all right yesterday. El diablo se lo llevó y no regresará nunca más. Did you bury him already? No, no tenemos el cuerpo para enterrarlo. Venga a ver la procesión. Maybe he's not really dead, Domingo. He might have got drunk and just went away someplace. La reina dice que el diablo se llevó a Majo. Los gitanos sabemos cuándo viene el diablo. <laughs> It would be a funny thing if the corpse turns up tomorrow with a hangover. It doesn't seem too likely. These people have an uncanny instinct about death. Maybe somebody murdered him. Murder Majo? He was only a poor beach boy without a penny or an enemy in this world. Dead or alive, he was of no use to anyone. In any case, who would even miss him? His mother. Dawn yet? Not yet. I'm tired. We have a deadline, darling. I'm working well, am I not? Mm. You're working better than before the accident. Accident? There was no accident. You tried to kill me. Oh, Franz, please. You tried to kill me. All you succeeded in doing is crippling my leg and blinding me. Don't think I don't know it. You believe whatever you want to believe. You blinded me. And then... Only then I became famous. Ha! And now, now I suppose, like Beethoven, I'm doomed never to perceive the beauty of my own creations. Ha! I'm afraid that's the truth. Ah. But you have to take care of me. I am not your prisoner. You are mine. Did you examine the animal? The one that was struck by a car? Ah, yes, poor beast. The shape is all right, but two or three centimeters bigger than the original. Well, we don't have any time to, to find another. Time we do not have, let's face it. <laughs> We're a month overdue. If we do not deliver the work within a week's time, the commission is cancelled. I know, I know. <sighs>
Bravo. Ah. At last it is finished, Tanya. I've left nothing out. <laughs> no. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Compared to that, the dog will be child's play. The two women will take much more time at work. I will undertake a friend. <laughs> informs us that it will not be difficult to obtain the final subjects. There seems to have been a sort of epidemic <laughs> in a town nearby. Huh. Remind him to be prudent, Tanya. They don't care for grave robbers in this part of the world. <laughs> don't worry, darling. Um, which uh, figure would you like to begin with? The seated figure is the more difficult of the two. I'll save her till last. Oh, good, good. I'm having a little trouble with her. What? Nothing, nothing, darling. Well, I'll start on the kneeling figure, but the, the subject must conform exactly. Yes, preparations already begun. Where are you going? Oh, go on. Hello. very lovely today. Why don't you put on a bathing suit and join me? You have enough company with all those young men. <laughs> Sometimes I get bored with young men, don't you? Maybe we all do sooner or later. <laughs> but then what else is there to do to pass the time? Well, you have your music and your work and a marvelous house. Valerie told me all about it. Why don't you come by yourself one night? Oh, I'd love to. Now, there's a man who's not boring. Oh, Monsieur Marchand. Huh? Would you please tell that gentleman, that is when you see him later, that um, he may come to my house tomorrow and take his photographs. One more shot of Patrice's house and then we'll head for home. Yeah, just let me know when we've arrived. Thank you. 
open. Why don't you sleep here tonight if the sea gets too rough? Mm -mm, I can't. Oh, I nearly forgot. Tanya said you could come and take your pictures tomorrow. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Where does she live? In a little house on the beach. And all alone, too. You know Elga's afraid of nothing. I wonder why there was so much smoke coming out of Badulescu's chimney. Maybe he's cold-blooded. Probably baking one of his statues. No. It takes a special kiln for that. Yeah? And you don't bake them. You make a mold and cast them. Explain to me everything. After all, I'm supposed to be an art critic. All right. You take an armature like this. An amateur? Armature. Armature, you have an accent. Then cover it with plaster or clay. Yes. Then from there you make a mold and simply pour liquid bronze into it. Like a cookie cutter. <laughs> More like children's mm. lead soldiers. And then you destroy the mold and the original so that nobody can make any copies. Right? Trust you to grasp the business angle of it. Sometimes you misjudge me. As far as beach property around here goes, I'm the one piece. You haven't got an option, then. But if you behave, I'll make dinner for you. I give you my word of honor. But everybody knows my word is not much good.
What's happened? Oh, you're shivering. A man after me. He was chasing me out there. Man. No. There's nobody there now. I'm here to ask you to come and have dinner with me at my house tonight. Are you sure it's all right with you, Tanya? I mean... Of course. I would love for you to come to my house. Tanya. Come on. We'll do you good. You're wonderful. My car is outside. something again, Tanya. In a little while. I have to look after Franz first. You might have to spend the night here, you know. Oh! <laughs> you don't seem to be displeased with the idea. Mm -mm. One or two? <laughs> two. Tanya, we won't be disturbing your husband, will we? My husband doesn't even know that you are here. And, um, I am delighted. I will even lend you one of my nightgowns. Marvelous. <laughs> you like that? Mm -hmm. Tanya? Yes? You're so kind.
No, 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 Tanya. I, I don't want an ejection tonight, no. The storm will keep you awake otherwise. No, I don't want to. You will do exactly as I tell you. Oh, I'm an important artist and you treat me as though I were a child. That reporter from the magazine came to write about me, not about you. Oh. Mm, wish we could go away from here. Any, anywhere, just away from here. There's no money. Never have any money. We're going to have a lot of money. Mr. Armstrong is paying a lot of money for this commission. And we can go away wherever you want to on a long, long trip. Oh, you always say that, but you never mean it. You have all the money hidden away somewhere. You never spend a penny of it except upon yourself. The same with my work, my sculpture, my children. That the world is waiting to look at, pay for, all hidden away, your secret hoard. Would you like me to get you something? Are you hungry? No, you try to poison me. Uh, really, Franz, you're such a fool. Then why do you stay with me? Well, we are chained together, aren't we, Franz? Who is your guest, Tony? Guest? Don't have a guest. I'm working in the laboratory. Oh, I wish all this present work were finished. Finished. We could have people around us again. Good night. Sweet dreams.
that France is growing tired. And besides, you have already dozens of pictures for dozens of articles. Well, you're the doctor. But I'm sorry to say that it will not mean much if I don't have at least a few shots of the work you are doing now, sir. You must realize the work in which I'm engaged is, is a commission group and cannot be seen by anyone until it is delivered to the owner. Please. Well, it's much Please. better than working on speculation, isn't it? Excuse me. back to her. Oh, by the way, I'm giving a costume party at Shanghai's tonight. You must come and break something of mine. Don't tempt me. I would love to come. And uh, don't be concerned with the mishap. It's, uh, it's of no importance. Bye. Bye. Take care, Valerie. Oh, 
looks like a lunatic snipe, me. <laughs> Where go, you, I'm afraid. No, but it's commercial. Where's your drink, Marshan? No, I never drink when I wear it. What? What yes. are you talking about? Soon we're going to own the town, aren't we? Oh, tell me. You've been here for some time, haven't you? Yes, about as long as anybody else. Well, then you must have been in touch with Badulescu at one time or another. Sure, he used to eat here once in a while. Mm. Not since all of these people have started to drift in. Well, today I was at his place, and I broke one of his statues. And since then, I've been wondering... Can I get you something to drink, madam? Good evening. Is this whip for me? Only if you insist. If you promise me not to lead, I'll invite you to dance. I never lead with a man who knows how to lead. You look fabulous. Claude, I don't understand what's become of Elga. She's not here. How can you tell? I know she's not here. Excuse me. Joe, um, can I have a little more of that ice? We know where Elga is, don't we? Don't we? I don't know what you're talking about. Ah, no. You thought nobody saw you. Elga was with you, wasn't she, last night? But I saw you. I know what the three of you do up there. What time did she leave your house last night? Why are you so interested? I'm worried about her. I haven't seen her all day. Maybe, maybe she was caught in the storm coming back from your house last night. I think she can take care of herself. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. 
You Shanghai? Should be all right there. Come on. I don't like this. Besides, it's becoming too dangerous for us. She's getting involved with that Marchand, and he's asking too many questions. Yes, I know, but we have no choice. Besides, she happens to fit our needs. Don't be sentimental, darling. Just think of the fortune we're going to make. I'm getting tired. You, you think about it. I need some money now, you know. I have to pay this car off. I'm all prepared for that. Me, darling. Me.
Llama a ese señor. La reina dice que quiere hablar. Venga, conmigo, venga. Deprisa, venga. con el pelo rubio. Majo, the drunk, and the girl with pale hair. Olga. Who's going to be the next victim? ¿Quién será la próxima? Alguien que está muy cerca de él. Someone very close to you. ¿Y cuándo será? Esta noche matará a otra persona. Exactamente a las tres. At exactly three o'clock. That's Valerie's.
What's the matter? Don't you think we've killed enough people for your husband's statues? Oh. <laughs> it's just another elegant. Thought she were enjoying it. Are you jealous? been lying to me. Marshall's told me everything. Not grave robbing, but murder. So what are you going to do about it? Do about it? I'm going to kill you. Just try, Dodd. But just remember that you're blind. Uh, I can see. Better in the dark than in the light. Here I am, darling.
Now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.
Thanks again for dropping in, and we hope you've enjoyed the evening as much as we've enjoyed having you here. Till next time, please drive carefully, and good night now.